Okay, in this video I'm going to demonstrate uh, the creation and use of skeleton images which were introduced uh, I think in version 17.1, uh, it might have been 17.0, I'm not entirely sure. Um, a skeleton image is useful for a variety of reasons. Uh, the difference between it and evidence containers are um, an evidence container you add a physical device or uh, a logical device or USB drive or whatever uh, you create your container and then you consciously choose to add folders or files excluding everything else um, and a skeleton image on the other hand once you've uh, started to create one every physical device you add thereafter um, it will automatically add a listing of the files and folders that it finds at each level um, but what it won't do is actually add the files themselves so the file listings are there but the file contents are not unless you consciously review a particular file in which case that is added to the skeleton image um, so to demonstrate how to do it uh, you launch Xface Forensics obviously you go file create skeleton image it asks you where you want to put it so I'll just stick it in here for now it comes up with this box which as usual with Xface Forensics uh, the recommended options are either ticked or unticked um, the only thing I'm going to change here is change the hashing algorithm to SHA-1 uh, and leave everything else as it is. You click OK and that is now uh, just like an evidence container sits in the background waiting for new input. So now I'm going to open a disk, I'm going to choose my physical uh, virtual machine disk in this instance. Uh, it gives you a notification to say that it's set as the data source for the particular DD uh, skeleton image. So now I'm going to traverse the partition. It just came up with that warning because I've already run this earlier. On a on a dedicated machine this will actually run much faster this is a virtual machine running on a not so fast workstation so okay so uh, it's now done that so this content here as a file listing will be now part of that skeleton image um, if I look for something, let's just sort that by that. Um, uh, just trying to find something. Black and white demo XFC. So this is the content of a previous case that I've added. So I've clicked on that file. Um, and it's loaded this content. If I click on that one, it'll do that. So all of these files that I'm clicking on should be added to my skeleton image, um, but nothing else will be. Uh, and you could keep going with that for various files. You could, of course, um, apply a filter to say only show um, text and word processing files uh, I might find it easier if I just quickly write a case add this to the case and then I can apply my filter to what I've got here so it's now in the listing 
as you can see by this information here, 3,000 files from the 92,000 files in total. Uh, so again, we could review these and they will all be added to the skeleton image. So then once you're done doing that, if you go to file and choose that, it gives you this little uh, radio selection. Uh, so as it stands at the minute, any time a sector or series of sectors is read, it will just automatically add that stuff into the skeleton image. You might just want to pause it for a minute because you might want to go looking for something else without necessarily having those files added to the skeleton image or in this case you just want to close it. So I'm going to click close. You can verify it if you want but I'm not going to click OK. And then that now closes it. So then you can then, uh, after you've finished wherever you are, uh, you might be back in your lab or whatever, you then add the image to your case. Uh, I can't actually now remember where I saved the skeleton image. Um, where did I save it? Where did I save it? It gives you a warning about the fact that it's a skeleton image as opposed to a full image. That's fine. And so now what we have is this skeleton image added just like any other image. You click on the partition and it will traverse the image, the uh, file system that was added at the time. Don't forget to light filter off. And so now as you can see, this is the the content of the uh, C drive as usual. But if I click on any of these files, any of the files that weren't read will be zero. Files that were read either by XWise Forensics as part of its processes or as a manual process. Uh, won't be listed. Um, so if I just go to those files that we looked at, all of these ones, as you can see, are empty. But the ones I clicked on, as you can see, have content in them. So, in summary, anywhere that you click a file while that skeleton image is running, the content of those files will all automatically be added to your skeleton image. Whether, whether you actually consciously do it yourself, or whether x Forensics needs to read it as part of its process. Um, and any files that aren't read you just get a file listing, which is very useful for a variety of reasons uh, with regards to defence disclosures and things like that. Um, but uh, if you need the actual files themselves, they're there in full.